on Highly Questionable. This banana-looking thing over here is my father, Gonzalo. That's Izzy Gutierrez. What do you like on the show today, Izzy? I know what I used to like a lot better, and that was Brady versus Luck. And that's happening tonight, but nobody seems to care. <laughs> Holly Poppy. Should the Yankees be favor against the Red Sox? Oh, my God, did baseball avoid an apocalypse last night? Can you imagine the idea of the Red Sox going up against the bullpen from the Oakland A's? Nobody's here for that. But you give them two Yankee Giants who hit home runs last night. The Yankees advanced, and now you got the giant payrolls. you got the history. You don't have a Cubs anymore, but you got this. It's the best thing in this sport. No, the Yankees should not be favored under any circumstance, even if there are Boston injuries. Baseball can happen, and the Yankees can win, but the Red Sox are better at almost everything than the Yankees are. Yeah, and this is why predicting these things are so impossible. You go the entire season, and you think Boston's number one benefit or number one advantage is having Chris Sale as their number one starter. Well, he goes down late in the season, spends some time on the DL, doesn't have that velocity back, and now you've got him doing a second bullpen session, some secretive stuff going on there, and Adam's is just telling you, trust me, I know he'll be 100%. I don't trust that. I don't trust that he'll be 100%. I know that Aaron Judge is back to hitting the ball well. He's hit a couple home runs since he's come back now. And I know Giancarlo Stanton is in his first postseason, and that could mean a ton of home runs. We have no idea. So with that first game of Chris Sale being a question mark and the Yankees being 7-0 and at home the last couple postseasons, I think the Yankees could be favorites in this one. Boy, the Yankee fans, they, they, they seem to be very excited with the stamp on this year. You know, let, let me look at some numbers here. Oh, yeah, he got, uh, he got 38 homers this year. But wait, there is another number. There is another number. He also has 211 strikeouts. Yes, and I guess that the fans there, they only look at the homers, huh? Normally he's looking at nothing. He actually wrote yes. these numbers down yes. for the whipper. Yes. It says 211 here. It's not a K. It's S-O instead. <laughs> strikeouts. Should the T-Wolves try to put Jimmy Butler back on the court? What a mess the Timberwolves have made. It's kind of unbelievable that they're in this situation with a player, Jimmy Butler, who isn't quite as good as some of these other players who have held franchises hostage. So now the story is he wants to come to Miami and that Miami's trying very hard to get him. But what do you do in the interim if you're the T-Wolves? This usually doesn't leak from the Heat organization. It's been in public for two weeks now. And what do you do if you're the Timberwolves? I think you have to play him for as long as he's there. Why let him atrophy if you're paying for him? It is really interesting how we keep lowering the bar with the, like you mentioned, the superstar that can hold the franchise hostage. We've seen it with Kawhi Leonard. We've seen it with Kyrie Irving. It's also interesting the timing of this with Jimmy Butler, doing it later than everybody else, so close to the season where you've got a Miami Heat team that's interested and he's interested in them, but apparently the package isn't good enough for the Timberwolves. But why should the Miami Heat change their package? It's not like the Houston Rockets have that much to offer, otherwise that trade would have been made already. It's not like the Brooklyn Nets or the Knicks or any other team that he had on his wish list have put a package together that's anything better. So if I'm the Miami Heat, Bobby, I'm sitting back here like this saying, come on, it's either Jimmy Butler for my package or nothing at all. You go ahead and see what it's like throwing him on the floor if you think he's actually going to take the floor and might even put a Kawhi Leonard situation because he's got a risk going on. So listen, I don't know if Minnesota has done any of this right, but the idea that Jimmy Butler can create this is what's amazing to me. It really is kind of amazing. And look how happy this guy is. <laughs> Actually, that didn't look that happy. That looked more sleepy than happy. I misread that situation. Hey, Jimmy, this is what you do. You go back to Minnesota, and when they put you in a game, you start shooting, 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 and you miss every single shot you take, you know. Very soon, they're going to trade you for nothing, believe me. They'll want you out of town in a, in a heartbeat. Here's the problem. Going back to Minnesota, he never wants to do that. Do you buy that the Knicks have a very good shot that Lauren KD away from the Warriors? Chris Haynes, that's FS1's Undisputed, is saying a very good shot. That doesn't seem like journalism or reporting in 2018. I feel like we can all say that a lot of teams have a very good shot if Kevin Durant decides to be a free agent. But it creates content for us, as Kevin Durant consistently does. And, of course, the Knicks would be interested in that. I just don't know how any of us in the audience can possibly predict what Kevin Durant is going to do next when we didn't exactly have it right the last time he had to make this decision.
I believe it. I believe it for a few reasons. I believe it because I heard Stephen A. Smith say it's a possibility a few weeks ago, and I believe everything Stephen A. Smith says. I believe it because if you look at the landscape of the league, there's going to be a team in the Lakers that people are going to want to join until LeBron James is done there. There's going to be a team in the Warriors that people are going to want to join until that run is done. Maybe Boston and Philadelphia, but the Knicks still have that appeal because it's not the entire league of champions. It's a few championship contenders here or there. There's still the Knicks. It's still New York. If they can get Chris Tapp's Porzingis healthy, back to the where he was. If they can lure Kyrie Irving, who really wants to potentially trade teams again. And if they can get themselves a Kevin Durant, they're going to need a fourth player that name starts with a K. But regardless, they're going to have a lot of great players on that team in that franchise, all of a sudden shifting the balance in the Eastern Conference to New York. And then all of a sudden you're talking about a finals run. And that type of excitement you can't recreate anywhere else. Ring! 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 Hello? Oh, Phil. Phil Jackson. Phil oh, Jackson, don't you? Huh? Really? You really think that you have a good shot of signing Durant? Yeah? Phil? Really? For how long have you been on vacation now, Phil? Yeah? Well, listen. Yeah, you, you were fired a long time ago. <laughs> you don't got a chance to sign him up. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. you can't wait for his reaction. You're just no. going to tell him he's fired and hang up on the guy? Somebody got to tell him. Somebody got to tell him. That's oh, right. Somebody got to tell him, you know? Altruism. I mean, somebody's got to tell him the hard truth. Was it appropriate for Tricky Nicky to call out the Alabama's student section? He is such an easy punching bag when he gets on this high horse and he starts telling fans how to be fans. So let's listen to this here. He knows that by the end here, he knows that he is giving them the sound that we shouldn't be getting from him. I can honestly say I was a little disappointed that there weren't more students at the last game. Um, so, and I think we're trying to address that. Uh, I don't think they're entitled to anything either. I, and me personally, I think it ought to be first come, first serve. And if they don't want to come to the games, they don't have to come. But I'm sure there's enough people around here to like to go to the games and would like for them to come too because they support the players. So I've never said anything about that before. You know, when I first came here, I used to play that tradition thing up there and everybody was cheering and excited and happy and there was great spirit. All right now, they don't even cheer. They introduce our players, nobody even cheers. So um, I don't know, maybe there's something else somebody ought to talk about. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it. Maybe I already talked about more than I should. So you all can beat me up for that if you want. It is kind of funny watching Nick get worked up. You can sort of see it happening as it goes. It's an idea in his head, and then he just sort of speeds up his speed. It's hilarious. But I actually think he's got an interesting point here. Not necessarily saying, oh, these kids need to show up to the game. It's the idea of how bored we get with prolonged excellence, especially in an area where those fans are literally going to rotate. They're going to cycle through after four years. They're not going to be the same students. So from beginning to end, they can experience that as Alabama being the greatest team in football. So of course they're only going to go to the games against Auburn or against Florida or against the, the Ohio State. They're not going to go watch Louisiana Lafayette. So while he does have a legitimate complaint, I also understand in this ADD generation that people are going to say, I don't know if I want to spend three hours watching that because the greatness doesn't come through as much as it does against the other good teams. It is literally rich that a man who has a contract clause that gets him more money than any other coach the moment another coach becomes higher paid than him. A man who has the deed on his house, a mansion paid for by the boosters, is telling students what to do with their free time. It's kind of amazing that he feels that entitled to tell the student section that it needs to be a little bit better. But that's Nick Saban in a nutshell. He's telling everybody at all times to be a little bit better, including his students. He wants that advantage even though that stadium that stadium holds more people than tuscaloosa has residents in it coming up next on highly questionable it's that kind of memorable this video it's going viral now because this guy can throw football and here's matt morin that's the 17 yard line thank you for the helpful arrow no. oh how should he feel after this. I'll tell you how you should do it. Today we're opening more than 100.